Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome back, we're at it again. Today I am going to share with you, uh, I think I found a good one, and uh, it's highly speculative, but I just thought I'd share some information about it with you because I kind of really like what I'm seeing. So here we go. Um, my name is Andrew and welcome to Sprinkle Money. And uh, if you've seen these videos before, Basically, I'm just sharing some research and whatever that I have found um, with uh, the share the stock the stocks that I'm buying today. Uh, so before I go any further, please note this is for entertainment purposes only. I am not an expert investor. This is all very amateur, but uh, I do enjoy math and shares and learning about all this stuff. So here we go. This is the seventeenth. Um, stock that I'm buying uh, for my portfolio of what will eventually be 30 different stocks and then I will then share with you sprinkle money concept that I am working on in my head. Okay, so it's a little bit windy so I'm sorry if you get some wind sounds but let's go. Umandi Group Limited, it is a uh, very Aussie name isn't it? Uh, <laughs> on the ASX, the ticker is um, EBG and they are a small cap I'll say that again, they are a small, small, small cap and um, like very, very small. So $48 million of uh, stock exists. So they are tiny, 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 tiny. I don't know, it didn't put me off. I thought, okay, well, I'm still looking for a specy, and this seems quite good. So let's, uh, let's dive into EBG. As I mentioned before, the criteria I'm looking at is number one, a company that play uh, that pays a uh, pretty stir like pretty solid sort of dividend. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of dividend, like huge percentage, but a solid dividend. Um, sort of a nice stable company. I have said blue chip in the past, but I'm just getting a little bit away from blue chips just for a bit of fun. So this is not a blue chip. This is a small cap, tiny company and uh, franking. And I'm happy to say that uh, Umundi Group do franking and they actually have been doing 100% franking up until recently and now they've dropped to like 50% franking of their dividends which I think is still sort of okay I'm really hoping they're going to bump it up back to 100 once their conditions improve yeah they've been doing dividends since 2018 so it's four years already they had a bit of a break during COVID and that kind of I feel points to some maturity in the uh, management of this company and being 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 a small you know small business well relatively speaking a small business I think it's um it was very mature to just have a little break especially the industry that they are operating in which I'll tell you about in a minute okay they if you delve into the numbers here are some really really positive things that I am seeing from this company and they are consistent sales they're consistently uh, having hot like a, a, a very good level per share uh, amount of sales, um, so that's been, that's a, that's a pointing to a positive for me. Uh, their cash flow is also consistently positive. They haven't really dipped into the negative much at all uh, that I can see. So again, a, a bit of a tick there. And earnings have been really good. Now they sort of dip in and out of earnings, but in 2022, in the 2022 figures, they earnings is the highest that it's been for quite some time. This is all per share. So this is um, all, all really, I think, really, really good signs that uh, it's a, even though it's a small cap, it's, you know, a solid a solid business. Okay, so what does the Umandi Group actually do? And uh, okay, so one of the things that appeals to me is uh, seeing some of the actual uh, share purchases that I make in action. And um, I have to say, I've owned transport companies before and it's been good to see the truck going past and seeing, you know, I said, oh, I've owned some of that, you know, I own some of that company. So that's a bit of a, you know, like a bit of, bit of fun in terms of investing. So this Umundi Group Limited, the EBG, they own, they own and manage the Ashmore Tavern, uh, the Aspley Central Tavern, and the Quench Liquor uh, outlets. There's only a couple of those, okay? So the Aspley Central Tavern, I, I, I know that place. Um, I, drive past it quite a few times, so I do know where that is. Um, but uh, yeah, the fact that they uh, have put money, they continue to build these two, like Ashmore and Aspley, they continue to build and try to grow these two taverns into modern facilities. Um, and they've updated them recently and stuff like that. That's awesome to see. And uh, so basically, Umundi Group 
is very much into the leisure type of, uh, you know, I guess leisure food, liquor type of an establishment. Um, and a little bit of exposure to that sort of side of the of the um, um, ASX. So what else do they do apart from this, these two main, you know, um, sites that they manage? Well, they also have the Asplay Shopping Centre. So if uh, you're from Brizzy on the north side, you will be uh, very familiar with this space because it is the one where a ho um, couple of roads meet there and uh, it's right between, it's at Aspley, right between where the Kentucky and the McDonald's is. So all those little shops in between, that is the, um, the Aspley Shopping Centre. And um, it's uh, a whole bunch of tiny little shops with basically shopfront parking, all right, uh, that's a prime location, prime. Like, that, uh, I, I don't think they've got any plans to develop it into anything, or you know, anything huge. But it is primed for a development for some sort of multi-level something down the track. But even if it's not, it's just really good, really well positioned real estate. They also have the Plough Inn at uh, South Bank. The Plough Inn is uh, another facility. They don't manage these. They just have that. They, they own the properties. They don't manage them like so that they don't have actual businesses in them um, so the plowing at south bank again very well positioned uh, good pick up there and something that has caught my attention again just reinforcing why i have bought this today um i bought about a thousand bucks worth is that they last year in august purchased a courthouse hotel in mawillamba and if you have a bit of, if you've ever been to mawillamba it's a lovely little town it's on like a tourist sort of um, circuit and the pub is in the main street it's the it's one of the you know major like sort of more tangible looking pubs has a bit of an outside seating area at the front I've been there before I've eaten there before um, it's uh, well well positioned for ongoing tourism now for what it's worth COVID whatever I think this is a, a really good purchase, a very smart purchase because you will always have tourism in that place. Like motorcyclists will always go through Mwilamba. That is a given because that's beautiful through there, beautiful. Yeah, uh, like I said, there's a, there's a lot of positives there. And uh, I feel at, I think it was like a dollar 10 the share. It's cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> uh, it is not a very, um, you know, liquid share. It's, there's, there's not many, um, it's, not, it's not highly traded. And I feel that is an opportunity to get in at the grassroots into this company. Um, it, there's a, a good spread of the top 20 investors. Uh, there's still, you know, I think if the company continues to do things like the acquisitions that it, like it did last year, if it's still looking for bargain pubs to purchase here, there, everywhere, I feel that it's going to work out really, really well and it's going to really boost this stock and uh, keep growing and growing and growing. Now, um, if you look at the actual figures over the COVID period, of course, the company has had some issues and it, with the current inflation and the monetary uh, environment at the moment, you know, people are tightening their purses, they're not gonna be spending as much money. So right now, right, look, right now, it's, it's not a really good value proposition, but that's where you can get in cheap, I feel. And as things start to pick up again, and as things start to improve and people start to spend their money again, um, you know, to, to on those little extra things like going out for dinner or gaming or, or entertainment or whatever, then it's going to start boosting back up. And uh, I feel primed for a launch into bigger things. Okay, so I would like to hear from the company a little bit more about their future directions because I, I don't, I don't think like I read through their annual report, they haven't really given a lot away in terms of where they're heading. I guess they're really focusing on just uh, uh, stabilizing after COVID those two taverns and uh and then obviously quench as well on the side um, but i feel that uh it would be awesome from the company to sort of maybe do a little bit of forward modeling and uh sort of give us a bit of the idea of what, what they're trying to do in the future like i said the courthouse hotel purchase is pointing towards some expansion ideas so that's cool and um, i hope they keep doing that so that's about it, everybody. I just thought I'd share. I haven't found any videos or any sort of reviews or anything on this uh, on this stock. So I just thought I'd push this video out there. And uh, yeah, look, if you have been thinking about this particular stock or want to talk about it or let me know why you think it's not going to be going ahead or anything at all, please let me know. Write it below. And if you've made it all the way to the end, well, thank you for watching all the way. 
sprinkle money uh, if you if you like what you hear and if you if you want to you know um, find a little bit more out about about uh, stocks and stuff and whether it's correct or incorrect I don't know I'm just I'm just like I said I'm just doing my research and uh, please subscribe and I will see you at the next video okay bye bye